What changes in an asthmatic lung compared to a non-asthmatic lung? So we've got exactly the same structure and lung volume is exactly the same, so that's not affected at all. And you can see that by measuring the total lung capacity of an asthmatic and a non-asthmatic. Now what is different and what can show up often in a severe asthmatic is if there's any obstruction in the airways. And we can measure that using the test we showed earlier which is your forced expiratory volume one, which is how much air you can blow out of your lungs in one second, okay? Now, if that um, shows a, a lower reading than sort of 75% of your total lung capacity, it's indicative of some kind of airway obstruction. And these airway obstructions usually happen in the larger airways in an asthmatic. So again, to go back to the lung here, you've got your trachea, and here again, your left bronchus. And it's this part of the airway that's affected by asthma. So the alveoli and the smaller airways aren't affected directly uh, and it's here that we get problems with mucus accumulation and the muscles around here can constrict which narrows that airway and that together with the mucus accumulation can cause real problems and then we can't get enough oxygen to the alveoli for gas exchange so that becomes quite a dangerous situation. There is no direct cure for asthma at the moment but most people have a preventative medication and that can work in a number of ways so the whole time you're exposed to all the pollutants in the air your body is mounting an immune response and it's producing little chemical mediators called cytokines of which there are millions and they all act in different ways but the ones that are key in asthma cause uh, several things to happen one is they can cause those goblet cells and those glands to create more mucus and secrete more mucus so you're getting mucus in the airways here the other thing that can happen is they can trigger the muscles around this airway to constrict, narrowing the lumen, so narrowing the hole of where the air can travel through, which obviously is going to cause you problems. And those together really impede how much the cilia can actually clear those airways, so more mucus in a narrower airway is going to make it really, really difficult to clear. So then you're going to get problems with mucus blocking these airways, which in some patients can be fatal. So it's really key that we target that. So one of the medications actually acts to relax and keep these muscles relaxed so that your airways are not constricted. And another part of this preventative medication is a steroid, which is an anti-inflammatory effectively. So it stops production of all of these cytokines all the time to keep your lungs in a much more calm state so they're less likely to constrict and less likely to get an attack. However, they're not completely fail-safe. And so people often take um, an inhaler during an asthma attack and that acts instantly on beta-2 receptors in the muscle around this airway here. And the drug, because you're breathing it directly into your lungs, is quite fast acting, so you don't have to take it as a tablet and digest it. You breathe it straight into your lungs and it goes straight to the area that it's needed. And as soon as that drug hits those um, receptors on those muscle cells, those muscle cells relax and that opens up this airway again allowing the person to breathe. So that's how your main um, asthma inhalers work.